it's definitely up to those two. You know, whatever you guys do or whatever works for y'all relationship, can't nobody sit there and say shit about it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, eh, as long as you're not paying someone else's bills or having sex, you know, or if you doing something and you can't tell it to your mother and your grandmother, then you shouldn't be doing it. Come on. We met on Twitter, had some dope conversations, and I had the opportunity to be on her podcast She's one of the most authentic people that I've come across in a while. She's going to keep it real. So this is going to be an interesting episode. She is the host of the podcast, The Diva Den. She is a mom. She is also the hip hop Oprah. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm great. I'm great. I uh, put on some hair for this. Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you now, I... Uh, I was looking forward to this, and I have to tell y'all, first and foremost, even to the missus, um, if I cuss at you, or am I even allowed to curse? What's the rules or regulations? Because I don't want nobody, like, marching and signs up, don't be her friend. Uh, Doesn't like what she said. I just need to know. That's no, you good. You, I need you to be yourself authentically uncut. That's why I have you on the show. Got you. I don't want so, you to think that I'm disrespecting you if I curse. It's not directed at you at all. You know, we're talking. So if it's like, get the fuck out of here. I'm not saying that to you. It was the words that you put in a sentence that didn't make sense. So <laughs> let's go. Exactly. This is one of the reasons I had you on the show, because I like the authentic you keeping it 100 we t we kind of talked about this a little bit. Today's topic, what is love versus in love? I thought this was interesting. I want to jump right into this because I think a lot of people have this confused when it comes to relationships and how easily we throw around the term, you know, I'm in love, right? Yeah. yeah. So give me your take on this. What is love versus in love? Let's jump right into it. Mm. Um, first and foremost, shout out to my dad because he actually heard all four of our episodes and that's like, he came to me and we on the phone for forever. And I'm like, all right, dad. Okay. All right, dad. But for me, um, loving somebody, I feel like that's the T loss of the emotion for somebody because you meet someone and it's your friend and then you build up to a relationship and then you get married and then it's like, oh, you're in love but you have an ultimate feeling for them so it's like that's a category like i love you but when it comes to in love first of all i don't think that's for family members i'm not in love with my brother i'm not in love with my mom so it's definitely in a relationship aspect but even being in love like that's an ultimate feeling like when you see them or when you talk to them or it's just a feeling that can't be duplicated or I wouldn't even say duplicated, but it's a feeling that's basically created by an individual that just, I don't think it ever go away to be honest. If it's true, it's like, I'm always going to be in love with you. So it's like, yeah, that, that's me. We're about to curse. I can feel it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's all good. So, so do you think that, because, and like I said before, we throw around a word, very loosely so when it comes to relationships because you kind of talked about the difference right mm -hmm. do you think that like why do people fall out of love um because just like i said it's a category like i mm -hmm. feel like it's a category of feelings when i say t loss everybody's like what's that google it um but it being the ultimate you know you work towards it to actually you know basically define like no i love this person because it's like i'll do anything for him like i got you but love is a verb so you ultimately have you have to show that or you literally have to make sure that you're doing you know what's i guess put in that category of love so it's it's a lot because people they say it and in certain situations it's like oh my god he said he loves me oh my god and it's like so um but then it's like to fall out of love like i said if you're not continuing to do that that made you like say that this person loves me or to say that you love that person if that feeling isn't there anymore then it's like i like you i fight so 
So they're out of the category. Yeah, you you're not, you know, you're not sitting in the front no more. Mm. <laughs> That's funny. Because one thing I, I hear a lot of people say, and, and I think we talk about this too with <clears throat> like younger generation, younger people, uh, or or maybe our parents told us. You know, that's puppy love, right? Yeah, I'm so tired of my parents telling Go ahead. So is it like, so does love, can it like evolve? Like, can it get stronger? Can it continue to grow? It's based on what you do. So I was thinking the other day, and I, I want to get this example real quick. Um, my wife and I, we got into it, right? So I had to realize that not only is she's my wife, but she's my best friend. So I have to find a way for us to reconnect. <clears throat> and that's even if 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 I humble myself. So what I'm saying is it was this quick roller coaster ride of oh, she get on my nerve. You know what I'm saying? It went to like this lower level of love to all of a sudden, like it just came back up again because I realized that it takes work, like you said. You know, yeah. so I, I, Even, I don't know. I think I think sometimes, like I said before, I think we just kind of throw around a term loosely. And I think because it's easy to get a man, it's easy to get a woman, but it's hard. It, the, the challenge is when you keep it, if you can keep it. If you're willing to do the work to actually admit that you love them enough to do the verbs that are required to keep you in that category, because you could be in love with someone and not with them. You can be in love with someone and understand that maybe y'all aren't in a place to be in a relationship. And when you say you're in love with someone, it's like you've already like, I love you. You know that. But to be in it, it's just like that ain't regular. Like it, it's not just on Valentine's Day. And so and it's dangerous. I'm telling you now. It's, <laughs> it's dangerous as hell because you be in a relationship with someone and be in love with someone else. And it's like, why do I feel like this? Like, and I'm gonna ask you this: Can you be in love with two people at the same damn time? That's a. <laughs> <laughs> this video is going to be. Yeah. Oh my god! I can't wait to post this video, right? Because it's going to be a podcast, but I want people to see this video. They be like, "Oh, that's so so deep." Yes. Hello. I have edges on for you. Okay. See, so she did it for y'all. Right, yes. she did it for y'all. <laughs> but for real, like people always try to say, can you can you love two people at the same time? Yes, you can love a billion, but can you be in love with two people at the same time? Mm. Me personally, from experience, I haven't. Mm. Uh, now, for me personally, and maybe that's just because I'm kind of more of a one woman kind of man. Where it's yeah. like, if I break up with somebody, you know, then it's it, like it's over. You know, I'm not just going to be like, oh, I'm going to kind of hold on to you a little bit and then kind of hold on to. Uh, now, now let's let's put some definitions on that, because okay. you breaking up with someone, if you guys still are friends, is that you holding on or is that like. I've just heard so many stories from people and they're like, you know, I'm I'm not with them no more. And that's it. Like, I ain't talking, I ain't texting, they blocked on everything. And then it's like you get in a relationship with someone else and then you even bring up an ex and that's an issue. But then there's the other part of the world and we're not together no more. But, you know, I see you. It's like, what up? Like. I could still be around you or talk to you and it not be an issue. But what I've learned from experience is certain relationships are threats to new relationships if you're still friends with them. So if you're cute and your new person doesn't think that they're as cute, it's a problem. If you were with that person for longer than usual, it's looked at like y'all still friends because y'all was together for 10 years. Like, mm. I just don't, I don't understand. It's like people make decisions to do whatever it is that they want to do. But just because I'm a friend with my ex doesn't mean we having sex every time I talk to him. Doesn't mean like we sitting there with a 
how to get rid of you. Like, you remind, like, no, I'm not listening to Usher. You make me want to leave the one I'm with, start a new, no, no. So I don't get it. I really don't. But I don't know. Love is dangerous as hell. I'm, mm -mm. That's interesting. <laughs> it, yeah, that's interesting you say that. I, I <laughs> Since we're here, let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Because, like you said, with the exes kind of thing, can you be friends with the ex? I guess they fall out of that love category. Nope. I ain't going to say that. Okay. Let's really be honest. Since we're here, and shout out to everybody to know what's up. Shut up. Okay? I'm grown. I can do what I want. Um, I literally, I was young, and I was in a relationship for a very long time, and we grew up, and I still talk to that person. Like, we're still friends, and it's not, just because we're not together doesn't mean the love that I have for you goes away, because I wasn't just with you for that time and we went through different things and different experiences and it's like we still homies and if you need me i'm there if if i need you you know you're there because it's like y'all not fucking y'all not sitting for together so i'm not saying it goes to bro and sis because i hate bitches that do that y'all had sex now that's your brother that's trifling so just when it comes to categories they're just not in that category of arousal and intimacy but i don't know it's like people make it seem as if just because it's like why are y'all still friends like what because you don't have friends you don't understand i don't get it, <laughs> I don't get it. yeah i think that can be a a line for some people i think that's a boundary for some i think some people in it can accept it i think others might struggle in that area i think it just depends on your attachment style what is there? It, why do you struggle with it? Is that an insecurity or is that a controlling aspect that you'd like to put to see if you actually have that control? Or is it just because society says, you know, you can't be friends with your ex. You sit in it and it's just like, no, she ain't friends like banging counters. Like, why? Why is she so friends with her ex? Like, <laughs> like no. I mean, this. I definitely understand, like, guys do stuff and then make it seem as if it's not supposed to affect anything. And so if you're in a relationship with somebody and you love them, y'all following the rules, everything's good, and then he cheats on you. You didn't open Pandora's box, especially if I'm still with you. So whatever you were asking for or making it seem as if I needed to do to be with you, that goes out the window now. So I'm going to be openly friends with whoever the fuck I want to now because you're fucking somebody else. So it's like, I don't know. It's it's really, it depends on the person. And I really just feel like insecurity is real because I, <laughs> I'm going to go to my ex's wedding. Um, I went to my ex's father's birthday party with my new boyfriend. He actually was at my dad's house while I went to the birthday party, but I was there by myself. He was there with his girlfriend. Like, I wasn't there to, y'all remember me? It's all about me. Like, no, his aunts and brothers, like, cousins and everybody, hey, 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 like, we showing love. I'm not trying to sit up here and break up nobody's heart connections. Like, come on. No. Yeah. I, I agree. I think it is, I think a lot of it comes down to conversation, too. I think... Because I tweeted the other day, you can't hold someone accountable for a conversation that you didn't have. Come on. So Come I on. think it's <laughs> I think it's important that you have that 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 conversation. So if we are about to get into a relationship and you say, look, my ex is that's my homeboy. Look, we're not going to do anything. But look, I'm going to go to his birthday party. I'm going to whatever. Right. Fill in the blank. That's a conversation that needs to be had. Now, if they're comfortable with that, cool, but you've signed on for this. But if you have an issue with it, then it's probably best that y'all go separate ways. You know what I'm saying? I just think it's worth having a conversation. <laughs> they're going to see this video. We're supposed to just let it be a podcast and like, hear it. And I guess, why'd you make the face when he said, shut up, shut up? <laughs> But, you know, I totally, it's it's definitely up to those two. 
you know, whatever you guys do or whatever works for y'all relationship, can't nobody sit up and say shit about it. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, eh, as long as you're not paying someone else's bills or having sex, you know, or if you doing something and you can't tell it to your mother and your grandmother, then you shouldn't be doing it. Come on. <laughs> Y'all heard it before. Come on. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> I have a, I have some questions that I want to ask you that I'm oh, really oh. interested in hearing your feedback. I'm what nervous. The, yeah. You ready? I'm nervous. Go ahead. <laughs> you nervous? I'm you're not, you're never nervous. I ain't you're never nervous. nervous. <laughs> you never nervous. Well, see this and text me. <laughs> What is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? Um, staying with a dude that cheats. Yeah, it's big as hell because it's like we big ourselves up and introduce ourselves as strong and I'm this and I'm not taking this and I'm not taking this. And we fall in love so hard that we justify the bullshit. And it's like, Staying in a relationship with someone that clearly has shown you that all you are or whatever you're doing ain't shit because you want to get his dick sucked at work, that's not for you. And then it fucks you up because you stay in it and it's like you're checking yourself and you're trying to figure out what's wrong with you or why why isn't he able to not do that? And I thought I was, no, leave because that's not. You're better than that. Simple and plain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think it, I think it's more common than we think, um, because some people I've heard from some people they, that they say that it's better than what's already out there. You know, it's it's my it's it's my known evil kind of thing. I, I heard that stick with before. That. Yeah, stay with the the devils you know instead of no. But how many people's on the earth? Eight. Point six billion. It's a hundred and sixty some dollars to get your passport. Um, you could try like dating different nationalities. This week it's Indian. Next week it's Asian. Um, next week they're taller than you. Next, like no, I'm tired of people making justifications or excuses for the bullshit. And it's not just in relationships. Like it's just with everything. It's like oh well, oh well, no. If they're not showing you that they can, then they're not supposed to be with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I agree. I agree with that because a lot of people get so comfortable with being in that relationship. They invested so much time and money mm -hmm. and all these different things. And then the funny thing is, especially if you're not married, I'm just like, Lord, you know, two weeks ago, you know, uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway. Mm. I ain't about to preach. Just no, we ain't preaching. Go ahead with your next question. Go ahead. <laughs> this this show was uncut. I'm listening. Lord, mm -mm. Mm -mm. go ahead. Go ahead with your second question, Sean. <laughs> well, okay. I guess we'll we'll save that for another episode then. Mm, 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 mm. It's it's just ridiculous because it's like we're grown and taught and just put in situations where we're growing and learning how to be more open and understanding when it comes to black men because of all of the things that they're you know going through and, and were raised against and everything like that. So it's like the first time it happened, it's like, oh, oh. and just like you said, you invest so much time into something and then you even check yourself like, well, maybe I did do something that, and it's like, you do know he took his dick out, right? Like, hell no like no you gotta love yourself way more than the way that he's trying to say he loves you because it ain't that it ain't. it ain't do you do you think do you think cheating is a two-way street do you think that it's solely based on one person's actions or do you think it's something that uh both people should be held accountable for to a degree. I'm not I'm not saying that the, the offender should get a free pass. I'm just saying. <laughs> <I'm here. laughs> um, I definitely think it's, it's so many answers to that because it's certain situations like some people say if I'm not getting what it is that I want and need at home, then I'm going to get it from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But if you're not open and communicating 
and even reciprocating what it is that you're asking for, how the fuck you gonna get what you? And I'm a, I'm gonna still bring it back because it's like you pulled your dick out. You sat up here and built that relationship to be able to fuck unless she was just free vagina. And it's just like, oh, okay. But no, especially if you put so much time into a relationship or you sit up here, you bring in dude, girl to Thanksgiving, your aunt's nowhere, like y'all posting pictures, kissing, like, no, y'all together. If you sit up here and cheat, like you said, you don't have no self-discipline. You know, self-control. You're not supposed to be in a relationship because that breaks anyone down. Like you, you put so much of yourself, you put your life on hold. And I love you. We're gonna do this together. Da, 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 da. Like you're lying. Your representative is going off. And then it's one thing to cheat, but get cheated on and find out, dummy. That's the part because we grew up. What you don't know don't hurt you. Mm-hmm. Let's be honest. Like. If I don't know that you're doing it, no. But everything that's supposed to come out comes out. So if you do get caught, it's for a reason. Leave. Like, no. I don't know. Don't blame me or try to justify the bullshit. Okay? Like, I know a homegirl who she got super duper sick. And her dude just was like, well, you, you're not sucking me like you used to. It's, Hello? And so it's like, no, people pick and choose what they want to do and how they want to do it. So don't try to blame me for your decisions. That's, that's not cool. Mm-mm. Let me let me ask you this. You no, talked I'm about sure. a man having self-control or a woman. Yeah, yeah. Self- yeah, because when Here you go. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. We talk about <laughs> ball headed. We talk about men. So. <laughs> so um, yeah. So you made me lose my train of thought. Oh, so how do you know in this dating process that a man has self-control? How do you know that? That's what I'm saying. That's where the time gets invested and you get, it's the levels. You know what I'm saying? Like if you, you're just now dating someone and I ain't going to lie to you. I don't even know how this dating should go. This is so, I ain't been in here for a second. And I'm, no, we're interviewing motherfuckers. I'm not, no. Um, so you put time and invest in them and open yourself up. It's like everything you need to know gets, you know, found out. But I, that's a really hard question. But outside of a relationship, I mean, what do you think that would be something that would show someone that this person has self-control? For me personally, I would look at, uh, I would look at how they are with like, time management how they manage their time are we conversing every day like these kind of these small core value things if you said you was going to call me at seven do you actually call me at seven these different things are we having these conversations and if you can't reach me at seven then did you have enough sense to at least text me or or say hey i can't you know what i'm saying just Mm -hmm. really simple things to show the consistency to show that uh i am interested but I do have, you know, a life outside of you and stuff like that. But just having those conversations, I think a lot of it comes down to morals, values, and like you say, even some time too. And then some characteristics. And I always tell people this, uh, and you know some of my story. I tell <laughs> people, say, you made your wife in six months? Yeah. I said, one of her core values was that she loves to help people who can't do anything for her in return. Oh, yeah. To me, that's a trait very few people possess. Yeah. So on the strength of that, she she was fine too. But on the strength of that, <laughs> I'm thinking she would do that much more for me and I'm putting in the work. But yeah. She cares for homeless people. She don't want anything from us. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just though to me, it's all about core values and showing those core values. And uh and that way, you know, if that person has self-control. Now, do we all have hiccups and, and hangups and issues? Yeah, we do. Everybody's flawed. But mm-hmm. to me, it always boils down to core values and being consistent with them core values. And then even what are core values to you? What does that mean to you? You know? So- yeah. Man. Next question. <laughs> uh, 
from seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Oh, Father God. What? What, what did he say? <laughs> this was a question. <laughs> from, from seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Oh, my parents' relationships. Your, um, pa your parents' relationship. Yeah. My parents. Mm -hmm. I looked at your past. Was, oh, um, oh, no, no. Yeah. Um, no. My parents. What did it teach me about marriage? Um, that you don't necessarily have to have it to create greatness. Um, like my parents weren't married when I had, and they never got married. And so I was raised with my mom and my stepdad, and then my dad over there. And so I don't know. No, like that's the thing, even where I'm at right now, like people put so much weight on marriage. And there's so many people that I know that are married and are bugging outside of their marriage. And then there's people that I know who aren't married and have been together forever in a day. So it's like, I don't know. I don't know who put that much weight on marriage to make it seem as if that's the end all be all. And I ain't, I ain't cussing at the Lord, but it's just like, hmm. I think that's a gray area for a lot of us because once you get older, like I said, our parents, what we saw, it's like, oh, you get older, you get married and whatever, whatever. Like I saw that from my mom. But even with everything that I saw in her relationship, it's like, okay, do. So mm -mm. I guess if I learned anything, it was to pay attention to what I want and to make sure that, you know, what I'm doing is really, really what they're doing, and we really have like an end goal for both of us, seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no right or wrong answer. These are just questions that I ask. It's just, it's just more of like, I just want to see what did it teach you? Because you never know. Yeah, right. who's listening, who's watching? You never know. You could drop one word and change somebody's life. Yes. You never know. <laughs> this is dangerous. Look. <laughs> <laughs> is it easier to love yourself or love someone else? Mm. Are we saying, here we go, what's loving yourself? What is loving yourself <laughs> and loving someone else? Like, what are we defining that as? Like, what, whatever you define love as, there, there's no right or wrong answer. I, I just like to hear people's thought process and how this works in their personal life. I think it is easier um, for you to love yourself. Like, about to eat by yourself, you could pray with the Lord, you get your nails done. Like, I knew I was grown when I went out to eat and table for one. Yeah, I had my iPad, I'm watching the news eating. I was like, damn, but, it's, <laughs> but I felt good. Like, it's a, it's a different kind of feeling when you know that you're loving on you because it's like it's a relief. It's like, okay, all right, it's a little bit patting yourself on the back, you looking in the mirror, dancing lyrics and shit all to yourself, remixing songs. like. When I tell you, I do not know why Teddy Pendergrass was in my damn brain. I woke up the whole town laughing at you. We, it ain't laughing at me, okay? Silly fool, like why? But just that alone, I vacuumed, cleaned, and cooked to the beat, okay? So it's like... No, you need that. And it is easier to love on you because you got to love on you first. Like, if you love it on somebody else and you're not right, then what exactly is that kind of love to somebody else? So, mm -mm. Hmm. love upon me. That's what's up. Yeah, there's no right or wrong answer. I, I There was one lady I had on uh, the show a couple of weeks ago, and I asked her this question, and she said, when I was overweight, it was easier for me to love other people. Ooh, I know we can do that. But I still love the book. Listen, I'm looking at pictures and videos, and I keep saying I was big as hell. Everybody wanted to love and comment and hug, and did nobody say let's have a gym date? Like, no one. They just was loving the confidence that I had. But it's like, I'm a loving person, period. So if I say I love you, I'm love up on me, and come on. Like, if you need something, and it's like, if I got it and you need it, you know I got you. So it's a different kind of something, like, but I got to love on me first. Big, skinny, uh, <laughs> big, y'all. Oh, oh my God. 
No, I hear you. Yeah, there's there's no right wrong answer. I just always like to hear people's opinion on that. Well, <laughs> do you have some parting advice for today's listeners? Parting advice in relationships? Yes. That they're never going to go back to or a tennis play or what? breaking in part. I would say, let's say tennis play because it seems like we have more situationships than anything. Um, look at the bigger picture and honestly make sure that you look at yourself and be honest with you because playing tennis is fun until you break your leg or you, you sprain your ankle or you just get tired because you're playing. So you really, really have to have that conversation with yourself of what you're willing to deal with. Because if they're not showing you any kind of effort or if they're not showing you any extra, because if I hit the ball and you hit it harder this time, what do you have to do? You either want to let it go or you got to prepare yourself to hit it harder back at them. So it's like, what are y'all doing this for? One of y'all either got to be willing to stop the game or y'all really, really have to understand that, no, tennis is is a tiring sport. And mm. if somebody for real, leave them. But if just be prepared to be exhausted if you're going back and forth playing tennis because it's like you want to believe and you have visions in your mind that you want and you're expecting them to live up to an expectation that you hold. And if they're not living up to that, that's where the game starts. Because it's like, ah. And then they got, they holding on to it and they're going to hit it back. So it's like, don't waste your time. For mm -hmm. real. Like, mm -hmm. just don't waste your time. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And like you said, tennis is fun until <laughs> you uh, play against Serena Williams and then you're not ready. Yeah. And then you <laughs> I wasn't even going to bring it in. I wasn't going to bring it. Look, <laughs> but it's true. Like, no, either uh, look at yourself and cry and pray and understand that I'm not going to lie, me and the Lord, okay, we've been, uh, I holler at God often, daily and then some, but to know that what we want or what we say that we want and we tell him, he laughs at it. And to know that what we want for ourselves is one thing, but he wants better than that. So, Y'all sitting up here tripping off, you know, Chris Brown and them, but no, I ain't gonna use Chris Brown because they tripping because he used to hit people. It's, no, but no, you really think about the perfection that you have or what you sit up here and you hold for you. And the Lord said that he wants better for that, like better for you. So it's like, Wusa, and if you're going back and forth, then that's probably the Lord trying to tell you to walk away, but you're not listening. So it's like, you're going to sweat your lace front out. And when it slips back, y'all see it. It, it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> this video is going to be epic. I, <laughs> I had such an amazing time with you. Let every Kashan, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Tell us about the podcast, what you got going on, what you got coming up, all the other good stuff. Listen, I, first and foremost... I got to thank God because I'm in a different place of peace and production. So thank you for loving me like that. But you definitely can follow me everywhere at Oso Diva, O-S-O-D-I-V-A, Twitter, Instagram, all of that. My YouTube channel is So Diva, E-N-T. That's all of my interviews when I'm actually sitting with them, getting in a business, you can get on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you actually listen to your actual podcast favorites. Mine, next. Um, the Diva Den. That's me. You can go right in there and listen to artists, business owners, the four episodes of Why Men Cheat. You're going to hear it over and over because we was going in. Um, but just just stay stay paid attention because we're working. We definitely working. And we got a lot of different topics that's coming up. And Sean gonna be in the deep den again. And I'm gonna sit up here and be at the crib watch me, his wife. We gonna have an episode. So is Sean nice because y'all met watch. But no, just 
the ability to be able to is truly a blessing. And I didn't meet you by accident. I'm telling you now. And I, I definitely love to converse with you because it's you being a black man and to be so transparent and honest when it comes to relationships or just feelings, because men try to act like they're made of cement and shut up. We but no, I, I truly appreciate you. I really do. And I'm definitely looking forward to the next episode. Yes, for sure. Brave Hearts community, you heard it here. Make sure you connect on all our platforms because, like I say, we've had a whole, what, two hour episode. Oh, we have I, had to break it down into four episodes. So, because everyone's talking about, I keep listening because we were going in. I ain't said a lot. I got some friends that don't even talk to me no more. They're not even trying to get interviewed because I told on them. It's like, damn, you, you, you hurt because the shoe fit. Oh, okay, my bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. But yeah, for, for sure. Brave Arts community, yes, you heard it here first. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you are listening to this on Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, on there by doing so leaving a rating review it puts you in a drawing for a free amazon gift card i realized the key to getting more views and more listens is making sure that you get <clears throat> inside of people's uh their uh group chats oh, if people God. are sharing your content in group chats you've hit the next level so that's my tip for y'all today <laughs> if y'all and start talking shit in, about me in the group chat. Just know this is synthetic. So I don't I don't want to hear shit about what I don't care. I didn't brush it a lot. That's why we were swaying. I'm so cute. Don't play yourself. It's all right. <laughs> this video is going to be epic. Brave Hearts community, make sure you share this video with someone. 